Okay, so out in the Westfield, before any work's being done, we always do a pre-road test. Um, we've come out a little bit further than normal because we've also just filmed a bit for the workshop update. The engine is, uh, you know, it feels powerful. We're in a lightweight car. Obviously, power to weight ratio makes a big difference to how a car feels. Um, but I just had a little power surge there. My foot did nothing, but the engine decided to cut back on power a little bit, which is quite often the case when these aren't uh, mapped and set up properly. The other thing we've experienced, which I'll uh, see if it'll do it again, is the erratic idle speed. Uh, when we stopped a minute ago, it sat at 1400 RPM for a while before it came down to speed. So we'll just pull over here, see if it does the same again. As I say, it's quite random, so no, it's, this time it's already dropped to its 800. So there you are, that's how random that is. Yeah, inconsistent at best. If you can, you can splice in the bit that we've filmed for the workshop update here. Yep. Oh yeah, just pull over here. So we're currently idling at 1400 RPM. Still 1400 RPM and eventually it, it drops down, might get down to, the, there we are, there's, there's its idle, it's a little bit rough as well. Looks so there you are, you've just done that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll uh, head back to the workshop and uh, explain what we're going to install here. Okay, so under the bonnet, it's fairly standard for a Westfield. We've got the Westfield alley intake or uh, plenum chamber. Um, and we'll show you that when we've got it off uh, and the trumpets underneath. Uh, we're replacing that with the carbon fibre uh, Westfield plenum chamber with the Superflare carbon fibre trumpets to allow equal airflow to all the cylinders, whereas this uh, doesn't quite achieve that. Um, in addition to that, we're doing what we do with all uh, two-wheel drive lighter cars of a 3.9 Range Rover injected engine in them which is ignition upgrades, RPI amplifier, magna core leads, um, and then the service items, cap, rotor, coil, making sure they're all in good condition, uh, spark plugs as well. Obviously, we will do what we normally do, which is compression test the engine when the plugs are out before we actually start any work. And then obviously a tornado ECU chip to make sure that the uh, engine tune is correct for that lighter vehicle. So that's where we're going to gain that throttle response and drivability down the bottom end. Um, and obviously in uh, the ignition upgrades and the equal airflow to all cylinders, the misfire should disappear too. So um, we'll, we'll keep you updated and uh, this video will show the whole story. Okay, so um, Steve's removed the plenum chamber from the Westfield. As you can see, uh, standard trumpets that are incredibly short, um, and I'll go into the reason why that is in a minute, uh, but obviously it's not really doing anything for bottom end torque and drivability, um, which also affects throttle response as well. So um, that will be coming off and replaced with what we're now about to look at. The standard plenum hair, um, it's gonna be tricky to show, but basically the reason those trumpets are the height they're at is for the centre ones to avoid this uh, air division plate that's been installed in here. Um, that's been done, we believe, to try and direct from air, some airflow to the back um, of the engine, the rear cylinders. Unfortunately, though, if we look down the, oop, hang on. If you keep it still, like yeah, if I keep it still, there. down here with the throttle disc fully open like that, um, air is going to get deflected. The, um, hang on, Steve, I'm going to adjust again. So this is the top, this is upside down at the moment, this is the top. The air traveling down here is going to try and naturally go to the lower section of the um, divider plate, which means the air going down the bottom here has nowhere to go and will deflect the air on the upper and create lots of turbulence in there and just not create very nice smooth airflow, which is what we want. Um, so that's not ideal and probably one of the biggest issues with them. The Carbon fibre trumpets that we're installing are a bit taller than that, which obviously means we'll gain a little bit more of that flexibility down the bottom end of the rev range, a bit more smoothness. Um, and they're the super flare trumpets that we use on a lot of the other engines as well. Um, there's plenty of height in this plenum because there's no divider plate. And we also bellow some of the air out and around so it can get to the rear cylinders rather than having to have that divider plate to divert the air to the back. And as you can see here, which I'll hold still much easier because it's carbon fibre and far lighter, uh, we've got quite uh, a nice direct airflow there. So that's what we're installing and why. 
Um, these trumpets on here look all the same length, however, they sit at different heights in the trumpet base. Uh, so that's what Steve will now do is uh, remove that, fit the parts and uh, get it back on. Right, Steve's got the carbon fibre trumpets installed then. Um, he has also transferred everything over to the throttle housing on the carbon fibre plenum. So it's now just a case of bolting this on here without trapping the TPS wires under it and uh, plumbing it all up. Then we can move on to the ignition system. Okay, so Steve's got the um, induction hardware back on. Uh, the ECU has been chipped. So ignition system all installed now. We've checked the distributor over. Um, vacuum advance is good on that. Mechanical advance is okay as well. Uh, magnet core leads are obviously installed with the uh, NGK non-resisted spark plugs. Moving to the back of the engine, which isn't normal for us. We normally go to the front of the engine for the coil, but we've got the Bosch 12 volt coil and the RPI ignition amplifier. So that's what's going to give us the bigger spark and a nice reliable spark from the Bosch coil as well. Um, as you've seen time and time again with all of our um, Facebook posts, etc. That is our ignition system that we fit on all of our engines that run distributors. We can do the magnetical leads in black and red as well if you've got a red Westfield or want an original factory look with black leads. Um, but that caps off the ignition section of this. So uh, myself and Steve, um, not you Steve, not other me. Steve, the one that we've told to not grunt in the background while he's taking some cylinder heads off another car. Um, we are now going to go and do road setup uh, and then we'll go out and film the bit we've already filmed because yep, we didn't forget this bit. We didn't forget this bit at all. Nope. So, um, yeah, there we go. Let's get to the next bit. Okay, so Steve's got the carbon fiber plenum on. Obviously, everything is buttoned up on this. We've been up down the road a few times just getting everything dialed in, ignition timing, um, the idle settings, etc. Um, performing incredibly well. Obviously, it performed well before, but now through that bottom throttle responsive area of, you know, I'd say um, anything from quarter to 25% throttle input coming down to idle, all that slow stuff is now exactly where it should be um, rather than, you know, having to either drive through it or let the engine do its thing and then you continue. So um, one thing that we did find when doing setup was fuel pressure was low. We were only priming to 34 PSI. So easily four PSI, four to six PSI, where we really want to prime to. So we did install an adjustable fuel pressure regulator. Um, where we're now priming to 40, um, with engine vacuum dropping down to about 34, I think we're at. Um, so all the work's complete, just leaves driving it to be done. Which we've already done. Which is why I'm wearing this, because my hair's a state, because this blows off at 55 and you can't wear it in the car. You need a wing on it, you can get some downforce. Downforce, yeah. <laughs> Does that do it? Maybe. Right, that's enough silliness. Let's go and drive. Yeah, so um, as you've already picked up from the passenger seat, Steve. Oh, it's so much smoother. A lot smoother down the bottom end. Um, so much nicer to drive because I mean although it got up and went you know as soon as you asked it to previously um, you don't have to really use the throttle pedal to just accelerate very slightly um, or maintain the cruise speed you, you're not having to work the throttle at all and the engines um, doesn't feel like it's got that misfire that it kind of felt it had um, so yeah uh, all of the work has done exactly what we felt it would um, and what it has in the past, whenever we've previously worked on these. So we'll uh, just go out to a couple of bits of filming. We're also just double checking that the car comes down to a nice steady idle speed when we uh, pull over. So we'll uh, yeah, just get that on film as well. I'll abandon you somewhere, I reckon. Probably, and I have yeah. to fight my way out of the harness again. Normally do, yeah. And uh, yeah. Lovely, lovely result. Really nice Westfield to drive now.
So we're in fourth gear here, just under 30 mile an hour. I'm just gonna very gently just breathe on the accelerator pedal and the engine instantly is responding, picking up exactly what I'm telling it to do. It's not fighting me like it was previously, although it's not a big fight, but it's definitely there previously, whereas now, it just responds exactly how your foot is telling it to. Just come down to idle here. We've actually realised as well with this, the rev counter isn't accurate at all. At idle it's about 300 RPM out, well 250 to 300. Um, that error decays the further you go up the rev range, about 3000 RPM, it's about 100 RPM out. Um, but obviously that, that isn't helping things from a visual point of view, but from the tone of the engine you can definitely tell that the idle is much, much happier now. It'll do. It, it definitely responds well, um, which as I said previously, you know, always had that gap and go. I think this engine's got a sporty cam in it, you can certainly hear it tick over. There is something there with the cam, everything's firing nicely, the engine's burning its fuel well. Um, so uh, yeah, but it, it always did have that get up and go, but it's a hell of a lot more refined now at the top end as well, and, and certainly through the bottom uh, to mid-rev range where we were really looking for those gains, and that better idle is a deer in the road. Always look out for more, I was told. Yeah. Rover V8 is good for nature. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I lost my train of thought then. Was not expecting to see a deer in the middle of the day. Expect the unexpected always, especially when driving a Westfield. Well, I pretty much know what to expect in a Westfield. Yeah. Especially after we've fixed them. Um, obviously, it'll do the first to fifth. We'll just demonstrate that now. So we're at uh, 15 mile an hour and fifth. 20, I'm not on the pedal very much, 25, 30, I'm on the pedal now, 35, 40, 45, 50, there's a junction coming up, so I'm not going to do 60, but there you go, does everything we knew it always would and probably better. Well, we'll uh, call this another success then. I reckon so. And uh, yeah go back to the workshop. We've just got to film the bit that was before this, if you've just watched it. Yep, because that's how we do things. Because that's how we do things. We also knew it wasn't raining right now, so uh, yeah, important to get out when you can. So that concludes this Westfield video. Or, if you're watching this as part of the workshop update, we'll now go on to something else.